Okay, so today we are going to have a look at a new topic and the first thing I would like you to do is start thinking about Venezuela. So write down what you think the population of Venezuela is. Do you think it is above or below 72 million people? Just write down above or below. Give you a few seconds to do that. Okay, so have a think about what you wrote down. The actual population is 28 million. So how close were you? Um, assuming that none of you know a huge amount of, or us know a huge amount of, about South America, um, how did you come to your figure? What kind of information did you um, did you use? What knowledge of the area did you use? And then just pop down anything that you can think of um, as to why you then came to that decision. Okay, so the new topic that we're going to have a look at today is called Alternative Views of Consumer Behaviour. Um, and for those of you that are tracking, it is 1.2 point. So think about consumers and the way that they shop, the way that they buy things. So do we think that they always act rationally um, and what causes consumers to behave in the way that they do? So have a think at some of the images that are there um, on your screen as well. It will give you a little bit of an idea about why. Once you've done that, then just drop down some examples that you can think of um, that have happened recently where consumers have shown they do not always act rationally um, as well for me. OK, awesome. so you have four different deals in front of you. I'm sure all of you have um, bought milk at some point. So out of all of these options, which one do you think represents the best deal? So I'll give you about 20 seconds to work that out. Grab your calculators if you think you need it and then just decide which of those you think is the best deal. So actually, that final one is the best deal out of all of those ones there. So give yourself a little pat on the back if that's the one that you chose. Um, so when I actually looked at this the first time, I actually thought it was going to be the third one because I didn't work it out properly. Um, but then if you actually look into it and work out per pint how much it actually is, it gives you a really good idea that it should be the final one as well. So up to this point in economics, we've assumed two things about consumer business and there's fab. So. Economically, there are three reasons why consumers don't make rational decisions. We're going to go through all of them individually, so don't worry massively about getting your subheadings down. And um, we will go through them all as well for you. First one is herd behaviour. Second one is habitual behaviour, and the final one is difficulty in computation. So, in terms of what herd behaviour is, um, herd behaviour is basically about the influence um, of kind of norms and consumption norms that happen. Um, so we are really greatly influenced by consumption norms within a relevant group. For example, if we see our friends doing something, then we're more likely to do so as well. Um, the housing market is a really good example of this. Um, so in the housing market, when there tends to be a housing market boom, um, it can be caused by that effect as well. So some people start investing, others think it's a good idea. That then creates that herd behaviour type of mentality. So what I would like you to do is find three examples of herd behaviour in economies and explain why the herd behaviour was caused. So you can pause this there, but I'm going to then carry on with the other examples as well. The second example is habitual behaviour. Um, so many people have a loss averse nature and prefer to stick with the kind of status quo. This is a really good one if you are quite risk averse generally um, as an individual. You'll tend to see some people aren't risk averse and people are. Um, it's quite innate depending on what you are. You see this quite regularly with, people, with bank accounts. Consumers tend to stick with the same bank account. Once you've taken out a student bank account, if you are going to university, that's the bank that you tend to stick with for most of your life. Um, breakdown memberships, so we're talking like ROC, AA, those type of things. Insurance policies, you tend to stick with the same insurance company. And finally, supermarket shopping brands as well. You tend to stick or go to the same um, supermarket. It's kind of distance. There's a lot of non-price factors that come into that as well. Um, OK, awesome. The final um, one is difficulty uh, difficulty of computation. So uh, difficulty of computation. And um, you are faced with so many different choices, you're confused by the amount of choices that you have. So just another example here, there are four different examples on a wine list. Which one do you think most people would opt for? And do you think the markup is still the same or similar for each option? So I'll give you about 30 seconds just to think about that.
Okay, cool. So can you now just jot down the three things that stop us making rational decisions? So what are the three things that stop us from making rational decisions? I'll give you about five seconds. So you should have got herd behaviour, habitual behaviour and problems at computation. So we're going to look at some examples now as to where behavioural economics um, has kind of come into play. So what I would like you to do is um, read through this letter. Once you've read through this letter, I want you to answer the two questions at the bottom. So how do we solve this issue and how does junk food impact the wider economy and society? So you can pause this here. OK, so this is the typical style of um, question that you'd get where you can talk about behavioural economics. It's a 15 mark discuss question. So the most effective way for the government to stop people smoking is to put up excise duty on cigarettes. So excise duty is a type of tax. To what extent do you agree with this statement? Remember, it's a 15 mark question. You're going to make two points. Both of your points need to be applied. They have to be in context. They have to be analysed and they have to both be evaluated. However, just remember, you do not need a conclusion. So what I would like you to do is um, make yourself a plan for this question and then I want you to start answering this question. So again, this is where you then pause it and you then start to answer that question. And there's two final things for us to have a look at today. So this is the first one. This is about you thinking about how rational your behaviour is. So what I would like you to do is write down a post on a post on some post-it notes, a range of decisions that you make on a regular or semi-regular basis. For example, buying shoes, choosing where to go at the weekend, what you eat for lunch. Um, and what I would like you to do is kind of put them along that spectrum. So one represents some, um, a decision that is 100% irrational, 10 represents something that is 100% rational. So think about the factors then that influence whether your behaviour is rational. And finally, if you then ask someone else to place that sticky note on the spectrum of your behaviour, would they agree with your assessment of your own behaviour or not? And you can pause that there. And the final thing that you are going to do today is rank how you feel about this topic. Explain your thought process and think about how you came to this decision. Thank you very much. OK, so hopefully there are lots of lots of thumbs up and smiling faces. Um, but that is the end of that topic there for you. Obviously, there's lots of things for you to do within that. Um, but I hope that was useful. Thank you very much.